Here in our analysis services project, we are all set to build a cube. We have a data source, a data source view, as well as four dimensions already created. Now we're ready to build the cube by right-clicking the cubes folder in Solution Explorer and selecting New Cube. This starts the cube wizard, and we're going to use the bottom-up approach to cube development. That means we're going to use existing tables. These tables are found in our data source view. And so with the data source view selected, we can see all of the tables that are found in that data source view. And what we need to do is to tell the cube wizard which of these tables is the fact table. Now we had renamed all of these tables. We had had dim date, dim product, and dim category. There was only one table which was a fact table, and that was reseller sales. In analysis services, a measure group table is equivalent to a fact table because a fact table contains a group of measures. We could also use the suggest button. The suggest button looks at the data source view and determines which of the tables has foreign key relationships to other tables. And here it correctly identified the reseller sales table. If we have multiple measure groups that we want to include in the same cube, we do have the option of selecting them all at the same time here. Let's click Next to continue. Then the cube wizard looks at the selected measure group tables and identifies all of the columns in those tables that have numeric data types. We're going to keep our cube relatively simple here, so we're going to clear the checkbox at the top so that none of the checkboxes are selected. And then we're going to select just a few of the measures. We're going to use order quantity, we're going to use sales amount, and we're going to use total product cost. Now while we're here, we can rename measures if we like. All we have to do is to select the measure, then right click, and that opens up the box for us to change the name. So I'm going to change total product cost to just simply cost. Now at the very end of this list, we have one measure that's not coming from one of the columns in our table, and that's reseller sales count. This particular measure is one that analysis services suggests automatically and would give us a row count for this particular table. For our purposes, we don't need this particular measure, so we're going to ignore it. Click Next. Then the cube wizard shows us all of the dimensions that already exist in the database. If we look over here in Solution Explorer, we have our four dimensions, date, employee, product, and territory. So those are already built and the cube wizard is asking if we want to associate those dimensions with the particular cube that we're building now. We'll go ahead and include all of these dimensions now. Later we're going to learn how to add new measure groups and add new dimensions to a cube once we've already created a cube. Let's go ahead and click Next. Then Next, the cube wizard lets us know that the fact table contains columns that can be used to build a dimension. If you recall from the data source view, there were two columns, sales order number and sales order line number, that were defined as the primary key columns in this particular table, which is a non-standard design for fact tables. But nonetheless, it's still a valid design. So essentially, we could create a dimension that allows us to create a dimension for the sales orders. That's an advanced design concept that we'll cover in a separate course. So we'll just ignore this and remove the selection of this particular dimension. So we'll click Next. And then finally, we're at the end of the wizard. We just need to give this cube a name. We'll call it Sales and click Finish.